This video accompanies the Ball or Pom Pom Dahlia, which is the latest Flora Society instalment for the autumn. So this is the flower that we're trying to capture. Absolutely fascinating, obviously really geometric, perfect in its formation. And the way that the pattern does that is by doing huge increases of stitches and then we fold those in on themselves in order to capture that same structure of all these little rolling circular petals. So what you're going to do is make a head and a body in one separate piece. Then you're going to make your legs as usual. Then your leaves are going to be slightly different for this one too. So we're trying to capture this classic dahlia shape of the spiked edges and the, a trio of leaves really, trio formation. So we'll be making arms like this. And then the most important thing is that you need to get this hood on top of the head before you do the stuffing. But first, let's start with the actual flower head itself. So how we do these beautiful curves. So um, I haven't even mentioned it yet. What's very exciting is the fact that we will be using coral, um, which is a, a brand new colour. Um, again, extends the pastel range from Toft even further. And dahlias come in a huge range of natural colours. So pinks, yellows, creams, reds. Um, I've got lots of them, in, it's certainly in my garden. And I love this peachy tone. Um, the one that I've got here isn't quite the same. This is one that I've actually grown in my garden that I've just been and snipped off before doing the video. Um, but you do get them in this gorgeous peachy tone as well. Um, mine haven't quite got flowers on yet, but I'll make sure I share pictures when I have. So what you're going to do is start using methods that you're definitely aware of. But key really is the fact that what we're going to do to create these um, circular petals is we push the stitches forward like that and we actually then crochet between the two to make all those in place. So what you do is you pull your round count in really small again and then you increase really big and then fold all these petals round. So you do do it in one piece. It's not that you're making them and then attaching them on. So I'm doing round nine here. And what I'm going to do is you, the instruction will say to put your hook into the next stitch along, then count 12. So you're not going to count the one that your hook's in. So you'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. You fold it like that. So I'm just gonna double check that once more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then you put your hook in the back of the stitch like that. So very different to how you would normally do. Normally we'd be working the crochet stitches from the right side onto the inside like that. We're actually going to put the crochet hook in the back side like that. You pull that together to create that lovely little petal fold. And then you double crochet that together. So yarn over and through those two yarn over and through that one. And then you'll leave that little um, petal in place ready to move onto the next one. So you might double crochet a stitch in between. Again, follow your pattern for the specifics of how to do it and how big these are, because these will vary on each one. So you put your hook in again, you count 12 stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now you can either hold that if you want to, because it is important that you get this precisely. Um, you could always put a marker into there if you want to, whether that be a lobster class centralizer, or you could just use a sewing up needle like this, because all you've got to remember that it is actually the twelfth one that you're going in um, on this particular round of the pattern. Every round will be different though, so um, sometimes it might be nine, sometimes it might be more than the twelve in order to create the different size of petal. Go through the back and then double crochet that together. And it really is as simple as that. It's not a difficult techniques wise. It's just a lot of stitches um, because you're going to do lots of increasing and then you pull, that, you pull that increasing back down again in order to create these petals that interlock over the top of themselves. So I hope that explains the technique for making the flower. Um, only other tip to give you really is do keep your tension nice and loose. Um, you might be worried about it, but um, when you first do that first round about how it's going to work out, but keep those stitches nice and loose because the looser you are, the more full that flower head will be. And obviously it is sitting on the top of the one that goes underneath. Right, when, when it comes to sewing it together, so where we started is the bottom. So you can remember that because we want these lovely um, petals to sit upwards in an open formation. So the top stitches you can gather. Just find my end there. So gather the stitches like that.
and fasten it off. And then the all important bit is the fact that you're not going to be able to get this onto the top of the head if you stuff the head first. So you need to make all the parts separately before you assemble. And what you need to do here is you take your head and body and we're going to put that inside here. So you need to push the head inside the flower head on the outside. Now, what you need to remember is um, it is a, it's an absolutely symmetrical um, geometric shape. So there isn't a front and a back that you're trying to line up with your um, body. So don't worry about that. Might take a little bit of pushing inside, but believe me, still much easier than when it's got the stuffing in. And I speak from experience on this one. Uh, with a few of the different uh, new flower designs, you're putting a, a hood on like this before you stuff. So we've got it into place like that. And then we are going to stuff the whole shape. So all importantly, um, which might be a, a deviation or change from some of you who like to stuff the heads as you go along. With this one, you are really going to struggle because you need to put its head within that other flower first. So now we stuff the body. And you are going to really need to use that handle of that hook to get that down into there. And again, probably use the other way around as well to tease it through. Then on to stuffing the body. And as I always say with the flowers, I try and get a bit of stuffing up into that neck so it supports the weight of the pom-pom head. And in order to tease that stuffing up into the neck, just use your hook in the same way that I was before. So you can feel this floppy, a floppy neck is caused by the fact that I definitely stuff that head and then stuff that body. All I'll do now to make sure that it self supports that um, heavier head is to pull some stuffing up from the body into the head and then some down from the body, uh, from the head into the body, should I say. So that there's, a, there's a little channel of stuffing that runs between both parts and that will then ensure that the flower will hold its own head up rather than droop forwards. So that is our beautiful geometric shape at the top. Once you've got it into position, you can obviously tease these open a little bit because they might have become a little bit closed um, during the process of getting it onto that head. So now let's create these beautiful classic dahlia leaves. So what we're doing is putting the points on around the edge and then you'll have made a normal crow your own arm and then two additional leaves. And what you need to do is put your hook in to your leaf once it's made. I've sewn in the tip end. I've left myself my long end for sewing up the arm onto the body. Again, follow your pattern for the specifics. And then the all important bit is to slip stitch in between. So you go in on the edge of the leaf like that, slip stitch to attach that one down, and then you're gonna go for two more. So one and two. And I'm going in between the stitches on the rounds, as you can see. So one back down there. Then in. And then two more. So in one, in two. And you're going to be working five up that side and then you go straight down the other side and put five in on the other side in one continuous. It's not that you're having to break your yarn at any point. So once you've gone all the way around the edge working those um, slip stitch chains, we now need to slip stitch reverse right the way around the centre to put in um, that detail on the leaf as well. Now, what I'm going to do is start from the arm end like that in the middle, and I'm just going to run down in my green yarn. You go one stitch along like that. So I'll bring that up so you can see that. Yarn over and through. And so you just slip stitch traverse down the full length of the arm. Now, I will just point out that no, <laughs> no more are you ever aware that you are crocheting with a spiral than when you try and slip stitch traverse in a straight line down something because obviously the stitches do all angle in one direction. Now, all I would say is you just correct that every now and again. So maybe every eight rows, you just come over a little bit to try and get that as straight as possible. If you are a perfectionist and you don't like the fact that you've got that slight wobble on that line, an alternative way of doing it, if you don't mind sewing up, um, is 
to just chain. So just chain um, a length of stitches that long and then you can actually sew that into position if you want to and you will get exactly the same effect. You won't be able to see the difference, but you will get an absolute straight line rather than a slip stitch traverse. Um, it really is up to you. I find it easier to slip stitch traverse um, rather than sew it into position. But if you want that absolute perfection of a straight line, chain um, a chain that's long enough um, to cover these stitches and then sew that into place to get exactly the same effect. Right, so I'm nearly at the end. There we go. And then what you need to do is take your other two smaller leaves and do exactly the same as we've just done. So do those slip stitches right around the outside and then do some lines down the middle. And then we're going to sew them with a slight pinch on this arm. So we need to remember that when the arm goes into position on the flower, it goes in flat, so flat that way. If you imagine the leaf is flat that way, it needs to be flat on the top. But in the middle here, we want to pinch it like that. And we're actually going to attach these two leaves onto either side. So once you've made your two leaves and decorated, them because it is easier to decorate them when before they're sewn on then you're going to just take this end that's on the tip sew it through there and you'll be attaching those into position on either side of the main stem and that is your um, dahlia's special techniques complete so i'm just going to go away and finish this off and i really look forward to seeing these blooming in your garden um, very different mathematically to anything else um, we've ever done before new techniques and i'm sure you're going to love it as much as i do